so far we have a couple items in our design and we can fly around and look at them from all different angles so now let's do the next step let's move the shapes around shall we So far we have a new design in DesignSpark and we have a couple items in it and we can fly around and zoom in and out and move around, pan and not get lost because we know we can come back to our home position. So this entire video is going to be covering one particular button and it is up in the edit section of the ribbon and it is the move button. And if we read the little pop-up, it says select the object you want to move, and then click an axis of the move handle and drag to move the object. So let's go ahead and click on the button. And I want to point out that at the top of the window here, it shows you a lot of good, useful information. All right, so if we look up here at the top, it says click an object, double click to select a chain or loop, triple click to select a solid. And that is on this button right here, right? So this button says select the object you want to move, hold control and click to select multiple objects. Important information. If we click on this one, it says select a component to move. These ones are not options yet because we don't have anything selected. This one down here says to move along a trajectory. That's going to be a little bit more advanced. We'll get to that later. Uh, move radially about an axis, also advanced. And this last one, fulcrum, select an object and move the selected around the planar edge and pivot. So that one's going to be a little bit more advanced as well. So let's go back and let's do this one first, the uh, uh, select a component to move. So notice that when I hover over the items, let's go ahead and zoom in so we can see these a little bit better. And like we uh, had set up before, let's change this to set as our home view so that we can see the items close. So with this button selected, notice that when we hover over an item, it grabs the whole item. So if I click this, it is now moving that whole sphere. Or if I click the cylinder, it is moving the whole cylinder. And the next item that it said was to drag a handle of the axis. So the way we move parts around in DesignSpark is we grab it and drag it and it pulls it in that particular direction, right? So we can move it all of these different directions or we can zoom in just a little bit and grab and we can actually rotate it based on where that anchor point is in the middle of the object, right? So we can move it in different directions. Of course you can't see this one because that's in the cylinder, right? So we can move this in different directions based on these handles. If we come over and click on this button and click off of that object, now we are going to actually grab individual components. So in this one, if I grab, it only grabbed that face. Notice that it changed color and none of the rest did. Now, if I move it, it actually changes the shape of that object, right? And that's the only direction that this can move. I can't move it either of the others. I can only move it in this direction. I can also select just the edge. If I only want to move it by the edge, same way, it will just move that edge. Of course, the face is attached to that edge. So it moves the face as well. So there are different ways of selecting different features of your object that you have in your design. Now that we've learned how to actually change things in our design, the next thing I need to show you is there are a couple ways to undo what we just did. The first is to come up and there is a button that says undo. Notice that also says control Z. So I can do the button to move it back where it was. So if I pull, if I select a face and pull this forward, I can hit the undo button up here and that puts it back. Or as the pop-up said, if I do a control and Z, that also undoes it. Something else to point out is that as I am selecting stuff, 
down along the bottom it will show you what you have selected and give you some status that's going on there. So there's also a couple other features. Revert selection, selection filter, box. There are a lot of other features down here um, that you can click on to change the orientation, to change the tools that you're using, or to edit what is going on. All right, so you can click, drag, and control Z. Same thing if I say I turn that face and oops, that I messed up. Control Z, put you right back. And even if I did a couple different things, let's say I did it that way and I moved it and I can do more than one. So Control Z does one step, does another step, does another step, does another step. We can go back many, many times to get back to where we were. All right. Again, that's the the undo or the control Z button up. The next thing I wanted to show you is when we're on this button, it's the difference between a single click and a triple click to select the solid. So if I single click on here, that clicks the face, right? If I double click, it's still just is selecting the face. If I triple click it, notice it says that now that it has selected the body and it changes. Now when I move, I'm moving the entire body. See that? This one here, there's no difference between the face and the body because it is a sphere. Okay. Next thing is, as I'm working with the move tool, if I click on an axis and don't drag it, then notice that there's some more new tools that pop up here. So we've got move grid, move as a ruler, up to, and then extend to certain coordinates. These two are the ones that we will probably use most often. So the first one I want to show you is the move up to. So if I select a direction and I click on the move up to, I can move it so that this face is moving in the blue direction up to the center of this sphere. That doesn't look like it moved up to the center of that sphere. But remember, that depends on what our orientation is, right? If I come around to this, where I'm looking straight across that face, I actually am aligned with the center of that sphere. Okay, so keep that in mind that that's the difficulty of working in, in 3D mode compared to working in sketch mode, uh, is that depending on what your viewpoint is, it may look like you're you're right there, but it's it's all depending on, on where you are oriented, right? The next one I want to show you is the ruler tool. So if I select the ruler tool and I want to set a reference point, let's say I want to change the length of this cylinder. Right now that cylinder is 1.202 inches. If I click on the center of this and I enter in 0.75 and enter, that is going to make that cylinder 0.75 inches long. So this is an easy way to change the size of objects once you are already in the 3D mode. So let's say we want to change that to an inch and a half. Again, I can click on my ruler tool, come down, select on this, and then I enter in 1.5 inches and it will make that cylinder 1.5 inches long. Okay. The next thing we want to look at is the anchor point. So if I select an entire component, I can change where that component is anchored from. The anchor is this little ball in the middle of this uh, indicator here. So I can click this and drag it to another location and it will then change where that is anchored from for moving it. So now we're anchored on the center of the end of that face, right? Or if I want to move that anchor from that end down to this end, now we're anchored at this end of the cylinder. See that? Or we can go back to the center of it. Now it's anchored in the center of it. How is this useful, you ask? Well, we can make it so that if we want to, say, move this cylinder so that the this end is lined up with the center of that sphere, we can move the anchor to that point, click on that direction, Click on the up to and go to there. And then we can go this direction up to that center point. And then if we want to go down 
up to that point, that just aligned that object with our sphere. See that? Now if I feel like I've messed up, I can do Control Z and I can go back to where we were before. Multiple steps. Okay. Now remember, if I want to move multiple items, I can select, say in this case, the face. And if I do the Control, that adds. So then I've now added those, but not the end. If I do Control there, now I've got all three parts. I can also deselect them by Control and clicking on them again. So if I select the wrong part, now I've got just the center, not the ends. See how that works? Or I can even do multiple objects, right? So I can do this face and the sphere, and I can move those both in a direction, right? Or if I uh, triple click, then I can do a control and triple click, and now I've got both objects completely. I'm moving. And I can change the anchor point to be moving in the direction of the cylinder. So that's kind of how stuff gets moved around. So another option for moving is we could triple click on this for the solid and we can just tell it the up to button over here on the side. And if we select, say, this face right here and that spot, it will move that sphere right to that spot and have it aligned with our cylinder. Okay. So we'll get this to our home position. <clears throat> now let's say we wanted to move this uh, face down a little ways farther to lengthen this cylinder. Let's look at another button real quick. If we click on the sphere Notice how our alignment isn't quite right with this uh, cylinder. We can click on the anchor button up here and we can click on the cylinder. And then our sphere will move in alignment with the cylinder. And another feature, if we look at the bottom right down here at the, of the window and we hit control, it says drag a handle to copy the selected object. So this is a pretty neat feature too. If I hold the control and I click and drag the handle, now we've got two of those spheres. If I do a control and click the other sphere and say I grab the blue, but I hit the control first, now I've got four of those spheres. So that is a simple, easy way. The control and drag is a simple way to copy selected items and make multiples of an object. All right, see all of this works? So moving and aligning objects is a very common task when we are editing and designing in DesignSpark. So moving objects around is very common. We're gonna be doing this an awful lot in the following videos. So uh, play around with this and uh, get comfortable with selecting faces selecting objects, moving them, aligning them, copying them. Those are all features that we're going to be doing uh, many, many times over in the videos to come. In our next video, we are going to actually start making our own shapes because I don't know about you, but I rarely build stuff with just cylinders and spheres. We've covered a lot of the fundamentals. I hope that I didn't lose you. If I did, leave me a comment or question and let's see if I can't get you your answer. And as usual, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell so you stay up to date with all of my future videos coming out.